Now, Rwanda is now working to boost the role that the financial sector needs to play in driving Kigali's sustainable future, and that's by launching a financial sector roadmap. Now, the roadmap will provide financial tools and resources to address the negative impact of climate change. It will also explore products, instruments, and financing models which are needed to allocate the levels of capital required to meet climate and environmental goals. The roadmap will also ensure that the financial sector in the country is aware of this transition, including the physical and liability risks that they may face due to climate change, and of course help to actively manage and reduce those risks. Well, earlier, the COO of Rwanda Finance, Hortense Mudenge, explained just how the country plans to implement that roadmap. Uh, we are very happy to launch the Sustainable Finance Roadmap, and it's, um, it's a strategic guide that we would want uh, our key stakeholders, especially in the financial sector, to leverage uh, in an effort to be able to see how we can increase the role of the financial sector in uh, meeting the climate uh, agenda that Rwanda has also set out. So in terms of now what you mentioned, uh, building the financial ecosystem to facilitate and foster uh, sustainable finance, I think it really boils down to, to three pillars, which is the areas that we're trying to really uh, tackle in this roadmap. Number one, creating that basic and common understanding of what sustainable finance entails. And to us, it's really looking particularly at the ESG, environmental, social and governance uh, princi uh, principles, I would say. How are you going to ensure that the financial sector is really supporting and driving sustainable agenda is by ensuring that there's a pipeline of projects and opportunities actually for investment. And last but not least is the infrastructure, putting in place a framework for uh enabling investors and financial actors to develop instruments and financial structures that will actually be i would say the key conduits of this capital uh, being invested in the projects. Now, Rwanda has said that it will cost about uh, $11 billion through 2030 uh, in order to attract new investments to combat uh, the impacts of climate change uh, on the continent, in the country rather. What are your financing targets, I'm curious, uh, in terms of implementing this roadmap then? Well, this is um, a 10-year roadmap and uh, it sets out to see how we can, as you rightly addressed, to see how the financial sector can support actually the attraction of uh, that amount of capital towards um, investing in uh, climate friendly or climate resilient uh, projects. Now, for us, it's, um, it's about seeing how we can develop, uh, I would say, an enabling environment for investors to set up investment uh, structures uh, to support the lending and more access to capital towards that. Quite recently, for example, at uh, during even the COP27 uh, that is currently happening in Egypt, uh, our own key stakeholders, including the Development Bank of Rwanda, as well as the Green Fund, they launched the Green uh, Guarantee Facility, known as IREME Facility, of about 100 million that will actually support now uh, the access to capital towards ESG projects, as well as pipeline development. So these are just some of the areas towards how we can help facilitate the setup of you know, similar structures and investment vehicles towards the achievement or attraction of that capital. Mm -hmm. Now, it is interesting because you also talk about working closely with Rwanda's financial institutions. And uh, you say you plan to push banking and credit institutions uh, to integrate ESG risk management practices into their business and, of course, operating models going forward. So what policies then could we see emerging from this uh, and how soon before they're implemented in Rwanda? That's a great question. I think our own um, financial sector is also currently looking at uh, the different ways. Clearly, ESG is becoming a big uh, topic. It has also been a big topic, actually, over the years. And uh, our own industry actors are definitely looking at ways to be able to see how now they can have a more active role in uh, supporting ESG investment. Now, when you talk about the policy, for us, it's really about how do you create the, the common guidelines and standards that different industries can look to to be able to have, as I had mentioned, common understanding 
around uh, ESG. And now, more specifically, there is need for that framework around ESG disclosure, reporting, and risk management. And so rallying with the support of the regulators, for example, and the ministry to see how we can put in place those industry guidelines to facilitate, whether it's the banking, the capital markets or insurance industries, to be able to uh, foster more lending opportunities towards that, to foster more reporting uh, towards ESG uh, investing. And will Rwanda's capital markets uh, play a big role in this plan as well? Absolutely. Uh, the biggest role, actually, uh, the capital markets, especially the stock exchange, uh, we're hoping to leverage it to be able to enable our own local ecosystem to mobilize capital. But also, as I mentioned before, uh, in setting up Rwanda, uh, as a financial or sustainable hub for the region, we also want to see how uh, regional players can also leverage our stock exchange uh, to mobilize equally. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you look at um, Rwanda stock exchange, we're looking at the green index, for example, uh, to see how there could be more and more opportunities towards the issuance of green and sustainable leaked bonds, for example. Uh, and so it's a great opportunity, and I think even more so uh, in seeing how the capital market plays a critical role, particularly for project support and alternative uh, capital attraction.